Okay, in this one, you'll, I'm zooming in because I want to show you um, about trying to repair some of this texture up here in the forehead. We were approaching it last time. Now I'm using, let me back up, now I'm using the clone stamp tool. I'm going to lower the size of the brush a little bit. But we were approaching it from the other side, the right side of all this damage. But now I'm kind of coming over to the left side because I realize that I need to come in with that clone stamp and, and deliberately get in there with a smaller brush and recreate a lot of that texture manually because the um, the automatic brushes just kind of aren't doing the trick. They're kind of getting too blurry and they're reproducing a lot of the damage instead of the textures that I'm looking for. So I'm going to just keep trying to rebuild the left side of this. And, you know, if you pay attention to the values, let me lower this brush a little bit more to about seven pixels. And then in here I can start to recreate in really small spaces. And you see what I'm doing is I'm actually recreating it so that it creates a larger space from which I can sample. But you'll notice that the value, if you look from the left all the way to the right across what's showing in this picture right now, is that, let me get the right brush size here, uh, is that the values change sort of from the darker values on the left in a gradient to the lighter values on the right side of, of this section that's blown up. And so it's really, really important that as you're recreating these pixels that in a lot of ways that you kind of need to be going vertically to take your samples so that you're vertically or sort of slightly vertically diagonally um, getting the correct color, well, values of lightness and darkness. Um, and you're not, you know, sticking a dark section in a light section or a light section in a dark section. That's very important for the continuity of, of the tonal range. Otherwise, it's going to look very badly retouched. So I'm just going in. Now I'm going in with my spot healing brush and I'm, I'm cl correcting the things that I can with the spot healing brush. And it'll let me do some of this stuff pretty successfully. But uh, at some point, we're going to get to a place where it kind of gets a little hard to reproduce some of it. And this is what we got so far. It's good to zoom out and see how it looks, you know, at this point. It's actually quite important. And let's uh, zoom back in a little bit here. And... This section, if we go and uh, choose our clone stamp, I'm going to make the brush tiny. It's like four pixels, and I'm going to sort of start interspersing pixels inside of this damaged area so that it starts to actually create the texture that looks approximately correct. Sometimes you just have to do this. Um, and when you zoom in enough, you can really start to see a lot of that texture. You don't want to zoom in too, too much, because then you'll just lose all sight of what is correct. So now if I go to about a 17 pixel brush, I can start using my clone stamp to to sample and, and repair. And so far, it's, it's doing a pretty good job in this, this immediate range right here. And now if you look, I want to show you how you can lower the opacity and especially where you start to get overlapping in tonal ranges, because if you just reproduce too much of something, here, let's uh, lower it or raise it up again real quick. And then I'll show you in just a second uh, how we can lower the opacity. But I'm going to create some more with full, uh, with the uh, full pixels present to just get that texture re recreated. Uh, but what I will show you in just a minute is you'll see how you can change the opacity of that clone stamp so that you can start to build up um, build up texture where there isn't any or where there's very little or it's not the right kind. And so here I'm going to lower it now because you'll see uh, slightly, you know, in this area you can start to see where I need to add more texture to some of these blurred out areas, but I don't want it to be too heavy handed because you, you see I've got that gradient there and I need to make sure that I keep the gradient consistent from the left to the right. And that's starting to look a lot better. Okay, now we have to deal with this part of the damage. And we're gonna sort of deal with it in a very similar kind of way. 
where we can go to where some of the good pixels exist. So I'm going to raise this up and I'm going to lower the hardness just a, just a hair. And I'm going to start uh, with the opacity down. I'm going to start using the clone stamp to, to layer the texture in a very careful way so that it is just very lightly overlapping it and it starts to give it sort of a more random texturized look and it seems to be doing a pretty good job so far. And I'm taking samples from different areas to go towards meeting the middle so that I don't go too far with one you know value being too dark or one value being too light you know like traveling into the dark area. Okay and you can start to see that I'm starting to get a little bit of I, the texture is pretty good, but in some places uh, it looks like there's like kind of like a line of value difference where the two edges are meeting up. And I'll deal with that in just a minute, but let's just get the texture correct. What's important is that the values aren't that far off. They're pretty similar. So I can also go in here and start doing some of the same stuff with that hairline where the damage is where I'm layering it. And you don't want to layer it with this opacity too, too much. I'm going to raise it up because then it's just going to start to look really blurry and you don't want that to happen either. Okay, and that's not too bad. Let's lower this. And now I can start to sample smaller areas. And you'll notice that I'm just like really being very detail oriented right now. And that's really important for this to actually look realistic because of the, the level of the damage that existed in this file or in the actual photograph that was scanned. Okay, and if I come over here just under the hairline, you'll see I'm going to raise my, or actually, yeah, raise my brush a little bit, and then you'll see that there's still a little bit of a textural difference here. I want to go back to my clone stamp, raise my brush up, and I want to go ahead and, while the opacity is turned down, I want to start to even that texture out that's just below the hairline in the center of the forehead, above the bridge of her nose. So it really starts to get rid of that damaged area. And let's zoom out and see how that looks. And the texture is really good, but see right here we've got this dark light change. So if I go back in with the healing brush and I need to change my brush size to make it larger and I need to change the hardness a little bit to soften it up. And then if I start clicking in between, you'll see that it'll start to kind of blend the tones a little bit. And then it looks like a more realistic gradient range. Let's come down to the side of the face and we can start to mess around with the values down on the side now. Don't don't forget to be saving your, your file as you're working. It's really important. Alright, I'm gonna use the dodge tool right here. You see right that that's just a little bit too light. The dodge lightens things. So I'm going to turn down the opacity so that as I lighten it's just going to be a really gradual lighting lighting effect and that made that one dark spot a little bit uh, more realistic looking. So I need to take my brush back to the spot healing brush tool. And I can start spot healing down here. And this is the level of um, you know, detail that I'm expecting from, from you and your assignment. I mean, I understand that yours isn't going to look exactly like mine because a lot of the changes you make are going to be slightly different, but it's this, at least this level of quality that is sort of going to be the expected level of quality for really good work. And what I just did there, you'll notice, is that I used the fill. I'm going to do it again. So if I use my lasso tool, then I go up here and I change, uh, I look for the fill command and I make sure that it's content aware. I'll do it again. <clears throat> so edit, fill, you see it's under content aware and say okay. And then it's doing basically kind of like what the patch tool does but it's doing it automatically for us. <clears throat> okay. 
and try it some more times. And content aware is really good in certain parts of a file. And then sometimes it just sort of stops working very effectively, depending on what it is that you're trying to do. Let's try it on this big, big section here. And that seemed to do the trick really well. And some of these things, like this one, I could have done with a brush, the spot healing uh, tool. Let's try this again with the fill, content aware, and it sort of works. We're going to keep what, it's, what it did, because it worked on the edges, but we can keep working our way down. And, yeah. I'm not so happy with that. This one is where I think I need to be more deliberate. I need to use the fill or the patch tool. And I'm going to use the patch tool here because I want to be really deliberate where I grab those those gradient values from because the gradient, the directional gradient has to match up. So you have to sort of pay attention to how I'm doing this if you're not really sure kind of like where you can get some of your values from. And that one, if I come back, it's not quite right. So if I come back with the spot healing brush, I can start to blend that in a little bit better. Actually, I need to go backwards because that really doesn't look good. It's too light and it looks like a weird pock mark on her cheek. So let's go back in and start being a little bit more deliberate with our spot healing brush. <clears throat> and now our clone stamp. And just sort of slowly work it down until it starts to just overtake the those pixels down below. Okay, and then it looks like a natural curved gradient on her face. Okay, I'll lower the size of my brush and go in and take care of some of these little spots down here. Change it again. Just be sure you don't leave any, any of these little spots there because all the other good work that you would have done will sort of be for nothing if it's full of all these other little weird spots. Okay, and in this case I can start to swipe parts of this scratched area and other places it makes sense to just click that's a good area to swipe and then that's eh, a little blurry that's a little bit better that's okay this is seems to be working on the nostril okay we might have to come back and fix some of that it's a little too blurry, but let's go with it for now. Just get rid of some of this big stuff over here. And, you know, I'm not talking a whole lot. Change the brush size. I'm not talking a whole lot, but what's important is you can just kind of watch my technique as I've got these tools selected. So that if you have any questions about how I how I would approach it, you can sort of watch how I approach it and then try to reproduce some of this on your own. Okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and move to the next video.